Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. Alex and I have a couple projects coming up that require us to tape or sew hemispherical type objects. For instance, the top half of a hot air balloon or a parachute, things like that. Things that are actually compound curves, but what we want to be able to do is cut these out of flat sheets of things and basically flat wrap them. And then, you know, well, it, since it's a compound curve, it won't be perfect. But what we want to do is figure out what is the shape that we need to cut so that when we sew it or tape it or heat seal it together, it comes out being basically a hemisphere. That's the problem we're going to tackle today and do some math here and figure out what that is. And then I'm sure you guys have had similar issues of your own and then you can adapt this strategy that we're going to develop here to your own projects. So let's get going. Of course the problem is if you look at this thing from the top what we ultimately want is something that looks like a circle from the top. Of course it's going to have sections cut out of it. Uh, it's going to be made up of sections. Something like that, say six sections in this case. Of course, you can't just take a, you know, a piece of fabric or plastic and cut out a wedge shape like this and then sew along the edges. You know, of course, you have to leave enough overlap for your joint and everything, but you can't just do that because if you put it all back together, you just get a flat circle that, as you know, if you attach, say if you're making a parachute, for instance, and you attach strings to it at each point like this, it, it tends to bulge out so that when you look at it from the top and it actually forms your uh, parachute shape, you, you end up with bulges like this, you know, between the strings. And it's not super attractive and it's not really exactly what you want. And you certainly are not a hot air balloon top half at all with this case. So what we want to do is figure out what is the pattern that we have to make because these edges obviously aren't straight because a sphere does not vary, you know, linearly. You also can't just take this and say, cut out a, a cone shape, you know, a, a larger cone, because if, if you do that and sew it together, well, then from the edge, all you end up with really is a tall cone shape, you know, that looks like this. You don't have a flat shape, you, you have some sort of cone. And that's not quite right either. In fact, that would look even more ridiculous than the, the slightly bulging flat piece that I, my roller shoots and things, or a lot of parachutes, rocket parachutes, they're usually this shape. And you know, and you know they, they bulge, and that's not really what we want. So what is this flat pattern that we need to cut out to make a roughly hemispherical object when we stick it all back together? So we got to thinking, well, if it's not a cone and it's not just you know a flat piece of that pie, what is it? How, how do we do this? So if we look at this from the side, I bet we can figure this out. What we want, roughly, is a hemispherical object when we cut it out and stick it all back together. Okay, and we know it's going to have some diameter. That's really, that's really what we want. We want to make this thing and, well, it needs to be some diameter. And of course, half of that would be a radius. Okay, so I guess what we could do is we want to lay out some spline points so that we, you know, measure up, then you measure out, and then you connect the dots and you come out with the nice, the gore shape that you're wanting. These are called gores, and that's what we want, is what, what are the spline points look like for this gore for our hemispherical object? Well, I mean, to create spline points, we could easily do, you, you take this here and you, you know, you could go up a little bit, and you could go up a little bit, and then, you know, here's all your spline points. Problem with that is, spheres don't vary linearly. And so what would happen is if we just measured up along our radius and then out like this, because uh, what we really want to do is, you know, we have this gore shape. What is it? We want this center line to have these points radiate out from the center line and, you know, connect the dots out here on this edge, because it's this edge that we really want. What are these? And ideally, these should be evenly spaced. If we do it this way, they're not going to be evenly spaced. Because as you get up here, like this, if we evenly space them along the y-axis, they're not going to be evenly spaced here at all. They're going to get farther apart as you go up your curve. 
because remember if we look at this on edge this this arc here is this center line that we need to space our spline points along and so what we've got to do is figure out how in the world to do our spline points well I think I just figured out the answer and it, we of course use angular measurement so that when we do this it's going to give us what we're actually looking for because we want all of these to be we want evenly spaced dots at whatever interval we choose along this arc so that along the center line here everything's evenly spaced all right so if we use angular measurement we should be fine we know this is 90 degrees from the base of our gore to the tip it's 90 degrees okay and so we know we know the length of the piece we need to cut now the the height of our gore minus any sorts of uh, excess for you know turning over the edges or whatnot is s it's our arc length well s is simply theta r r is here and theta we will determine by how many ever spline points we think we need so let's uh let's do this one in blue this will be our little spline point calculator say theta so if we do one say every 10 degrees we'll have 10 or 11 because we'll have you'll have one at zero you know you'll do one here at 10 you do one at 20 30 and so on up to 90 degrees here at the apex so we can now kind of draw this out over here what our pattern is going to look like we've got our center line coming down the base of this is just a straight line because the the arc as it comes down is perpendicular to our base edge here at this one spot it is exactly vertical and so our the base of our gore will be a straight line at least for what we're doing here and for for most cases of course you know this thing's still going to bulge because it's a we're attempting to flat wrap a compound curve which you really can't do but for what we're doing this is going to be pretty darn good so we have our base here the the base of this the length of our base is the circumference of this remember is pi d from basic math so it would be pi d divided by the number of gores you want now of course the more gores you have the more spherical and less bulgy that this thing is going to be of course it's also more complex so i i would say let's do eight eight gores actually so it'd be uh, pi d so this l here l is simply pi d over g which is our number of gores so that's the length of this edge the length of this is theta r which is one quarter of a circle we've we've got our r I mean this is a hemisphere so it's just a quarter of a circle so that's that's no big deal there so this L we'll call this height H is uh, pi R over 2 because pi R 2 pi R is the whole way around a circle pi R is halfway we only want to go a quarter of that so pi r over 2 is the height of our gore now the, the thing we want to know the whole part the whole point of this problem is what does this edge here look like does it you know does it come up and go like this does it come in like this it's we know it's not a straight line already so it's not that but what does this look like and if we take all these little points up here how far out in the x direction do we go to put our dot that's what we want to know so that we can connect these dots create this nice spline and make our gore and what we want to know here then is how far out to go well the how far out to go depends on the angle at which we are at on our hemisphere down here at the base we are R. All right. Yeah, that's that's no big deal. But here when we get to 10 degrees, 
you know, where we're not quite are. So there's probably a little bit of trig involved, isn't there? You're right, there's some trig involved. It's really not that tough. So let's let's do this here. This, this arm is always R. This blue line is always R. And all we need to do is figure out what this here is, this leg. Anyone happen to remember what that is? This, uh, the X, the X axis dimension or the adjacent to our angle? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? It's the cosine, isn't it? Yes, of course it is. So this is going to be cosine. This angle, or this, this distance here, well, I'll, I'll, I'll draw it over here, is cosine theta r. R, well, r cosine theta. That's this. So that cosine of zero, remember, is one, because you get, you get the whole, you get the entire thing. When you go 90 degrees, cosine has zero component in the x, so it's zero, so that we know cosine is the one we want. So let's actually work this out for an example. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created this table over here to kind of explain all of this, because we're gonna run this example now where the diameter of our hemisphere is gonna be 48 inches, therefore the radius is 24. I've went ahead and labeled all of our thetas here in 10 degree increments. In the second column here in green, I have converted those to radians because I was doing my math here in radians. And then r cosine theta is what we want to remember to figure out here how far to go out. Because if you think about this, we're, we're not quite ready to figure out where these spline points are just yet. We've got one more thing to do, and this is that intermediate step. If you imagine this, this blue line here, it's tilting up and then sweeping out a circle, right? It tilts up another 10 degrees and sweeps out a circle so that it looks somewhat like this sketch down here where you've got, if we kind of look at it orthogonally, we've got a, an apex here and then these different circles which would be our uh, ultimate spline points here that we're going to work with. We need to get to this point, but we can't, we can't get at it directly from looking at this on edge because that's just not going to get us what we want. What we have to do is at each of these 10 degree increments, this arm is sweeping out. So, you know, we, we, down here at zero, we're going and it's 24. We tilt up 10 degrees, we go and it's a little bit less. And we keep tilting up and sweeping out these circles. And what we've got to do is figure out what the circumference of these circles are so that we can then divide those circumferences by the number of gores that we have so that then we can divide those by two and figure out then where our spline points are from the center line of our gore. We're almost there, I promise. So then I've got all my r cosine thetas, which is the, the uh, width here that this is sweeping out. That's the, that's the radius of this circle that each of these 10 degree increments is sweeping. So then, once we know the, uh, the arm that this is sweeping, we can then figure out the total circumference by using our uh, two pi r formula. So this now is our r, r cosine theta, that's the length of this arm. Then we can multiply that by pi r to figure out, uh, or two pi r, excuse me, to figure out what the circumference of that circle is. So let me go ahead and do that now. Now, of course, there's going to be an Excel file available for download on my website in which you can plug in all the numbers for whatever case you want to do and it will do the heavy lifting and it will basically plot the gore for you. Now of course it won't be one to one scale but there is an Excel spreadsheet available so you don't have to go do all this. But at least now you know kind of the background of what's going on. So let me plug in these numbers real quick. Let's, let's double check that last one, make sure that is in fact zero. Two pi times zero is in fact zero. That's good. So now we know the circumference at each of these spline points. Now all we gotta do is divide this number by two times the number of gores. We've decided the number of gores is eight. So each of these, each of these sections across here will be one eighth of these numbers here in red. Of course, we're measuring from the center line, so 1 16th or half that number that we just calculated will be in the final column 
for our spline points. So let's do that. And there are the spline points. From the apex to the base, plus or minus these amounts out from the center line. Really not all that difficult. Like I said, I've got an Excel file that you guys can download from mikesinventions.com slash downloads so that you guys don't have to do all this heavy lifting. But this is the math that's behind this. If you just take a step back and think about it, and you've had a little bit of math in your past, I guarantee you this would have come to you. But this is how we are going to attempt to make various hemispherical objects out of fabrics and plastics and whatever, anything that bends pretty much. But let me not just show you the theory. Let's actually go make something. I better change my shirt. Well, I got my shirt and tie back on and you can see that really wasn't all that difficult. I hope this helps you out in your project. Like I said, go ahead and download the Excel file, but it's really not that difficult. You can definitely do this yourself. Just don't be afraid to try. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.